Right, happy Easter, um, and it is day 99 of my attempt to plant a new tree for every single day of 2023. Um, I had been doing weekly reviews, this is going to be the first of the fortnightly reviews because it's drying out, not much is changing very fast, and it's taken a very long time to edit these, as you might imagine. Uh, so let's get on with it. Right, so this is a little macadamia integrifolia, I think, either that one or hybrid, uh, which has been coming up nicely. You can see the lighter green growth on top there. It's actually all come up in the last three weeks, really. Uh, just excuse the hammer cops having their morning chatter. Um, but it is looking really good, so I'm happy with that. And down in here we have our tree philodendron, Thalmatophyllum bivinatophidium, that went in a couple of weeks back, I think, now. It's looking nice. There's not much in the way of new growth. There's a couple of tiny little leaves unfurling below it, but nothing major. So next up we have Alloydendron barberry, which is the eastern tree aloe. This one is coming up pretty nicely. You can see that central leaf there has overtaken the uh, stick and there's actually a new pair of leaves coming up slowly in the middle there so, so it is growing it's not rocketing up yet but hopefully as it dries out it'll it'll take advantage of the increased light and grow a little bit faster and get a little bit less blotchy in the process right so this is not a saddle I'm now pretty sure this is actually a Livestona the nursery which had it on offer under saddle along with the rest of the saddle palms uh, has now split that giant group of little baby palms into Sabble and Living Stonia, uh, which is not a genus of palms as far as I'm aware at all, so it should be a Livestona chinensis, most probably, which is the Chinese fan palm. But it is looking nice, it's looking a good colour, a much better colour for a Livestona than it would be for a Sabble, um, and I am, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. This is a Sabble, and it is the colour I would expect a Sabble in this environment to be, and it's coming up nicely. It's a Sabble palmetto, which uh, both the Latin name and the common name are the same word. And down in this dried out little tangle of bamboo, we have a lovely little uh, pink ivory mango, or peach mango, which is coming up really nicely. So this went in from seedling, and it has come up re really well from there. It does currently have three stems, so I will probably eventually be taking that down to one, or plaiting them together so they can form a nice firm trunk a little sooner in life. So this little guy is the Spezia Garciana, which is also called a tree hibiscus, or sometimes a snot apple. Um, it does have an edible fruit, it's one of the native trees. It, mm, this leaf here is the only one the leaves it had when it went in that's still present, um, and everything else is new, and it does look like there's some growth happening right in the centre there as well. Oh no, no, that's just a bit of bird dropping. Uh, so, so currently it's probably going to go static. It will probably drop these leaves over winter, um, because they are quite deciduous generally, uh, but they should come back and it should, yeah, should have enough mass by now to regenerate pretty well when it does. And this is Anona muricata, which is a soursop, which is one of the larger fruiting uh, custard apples, and it is growing nicely still. Still one active growth point here and another one just over here. Um, all the growth points sort of to the southeast, which is the drying direction usually, because that's where the wind comes from, have stopped entirely, and it does seem to be sort of focusing on these branches for its upward growth, so those will probably end up being the dominant. Uh, but it's a generally healthy, happy looking little plant, and I'm happy with that. Our other bay laurels are starting to show some decent growth now, so hopefully this one is about to sort of commit. It has several growing points which have been active, but they haven't really produced full-size leaves yet. I mean, that's not unusual on something settling in for it to produce sort of shrunken leaves. Uh, but it should start hopefully perking up. And there's actually some green showing in one of the... showing in one of these growth tips here at the top, which had seemed to sort of stop. And so that it's showing green again is pretty promising. Hopefully that will be translating into new leaves pretty quickly. Now we have Bauhinia petersiana, which is definitely getting into its winter mode. So it is slowly starting to reclaim the nutrition from all of these leaves and they will be falling off in short order and then it'll look like a fairly tragic mostly bare stick usually they won't drop everything they'll drop most of their leaves uh, for the winter which will be a little depressing for a while but it should spring back once we warm up again right and down here we have a washingtonia filifera which is coming up pretty nicely i would say i'm fairly sure that's one new leaf open since it went in and another new leaf starting to come up just in the middle here so I'm happy with that. Okay, and here we have what looks like the tragic remains, but are not actually tragic remains. This is a rain tree, which has suffered two little attacks. First off, it's been uh, 
buried quite thoroughly by some mole rats doing some excavations. Uh, and secondly, uh, some woolly bear caterpillars have decided to eat back a lot of the growing part of the plant. But it's still alive, still a decent colour, even though the sunlight hides it in the parts that haven't been completely toasted. Um, so it should be recovering soon. This is actually not one I planted, this is just one I decided to mark out because it was where I was going to plant a tree and then found there was already a tree there. If that little rain tree thrives, it'll eventually be giving shelter to this little jackfruit tree, which is nice and green. So this is Articarpus heterophyllus. You can see it's coming up quite nicely in the middle there. There's a little bit of burn um, on what had been a new leaf opening up. So we'll see if that actually finishes opening up or not. You can actually see a little woolly bear caterpillar sneaking along there, but that one looks parasitized. So I'm not too worried about the damage that'll do. So this is the pencil tree, which is Euphorbia tirucali. It's one of the large succulent milkweeds. Um, and it's looking pretty healthy. The big concern would be if it was going brown around the base, which it is not. So I'm happy there. Next up, we have the first of many Sagris romanzofiana. So this is the Brazilian green plum. And it's actually looking pretty, pretty floppy. It did get quite a lot of water stress when it first went in, and it has had a little bit of sunburn here. Um, but it's still green. I would like it to be firming up at the base rather than just maintaining floppiness. Uh, but it hasn't started firming up yet, but hopefully soon. The second one that went in on the same day is in a broadly similar state, just a little bit firmer. It has also been in something of a holding pattern in this slightly better state than that one. Uh, they aren't great in full sun to begin with, so this might have been an overly exposed location, so I might have to come in and put some, some high uh, dracaenas or pieces of bamboo stake in here just to sort of slow the air movement around them and reduce the sunlight they're getting just to try and give them a better chance because, yeah, full sun is not really their jam. Hoping for a little bit of good news but not seeing any in here. There should be a little bright green leaf in the middle there which would be of Paranari curatelifolia, which is the Impundu omobola plum, which is a beautiful uh, native fruit tree, but it did get very sunburned when it first went in, and it really doesn't seem thrilled, and I suspect there was some root damage uh, beyond what it could recover from when I transplanted it. So unfortunately, I think that one is staying off the list long term. The last, the last tree from that day's planting was a Phoenix erectinata, which is one of the wild date palms. Um, and it does seem pretty healthy. It's a little bit looser around the base than I'd like, but the leaves are green. They seem to be a little bit of decent growth coming up on this nice firm central leaf here. Um, and generally speaking, it looks in a good way. We have Bauhinia expliciana, which is the Hong Kong Bauhinia or Hong Kong orchid tree, um, which only went in yesterday, so I'm not really expecting any change yet. The big risk will be as the sun gets brighter, does this get sunburned today or not? So we will see. Here we have the native waterberry, uh, Syzygium guineensis. Now these are a little sensitive in transplanting, so I actually transplanted four uh, in the hopes of getting one survivor, and I've actually now got three, because this one has perked up its leaves. Uh, all this growth here is new since it went in. Everything that was on it died off, and then it came back up, uh, as has this one, and somewhere down here, another one is starting to show the same effect. There's one dead leaf still on there, but some nice living leaves in the center. Only one of the four seedlings actually hasn't shown any recovery yet. And I'm not convinced this is completely dead. These leaves are still well attached, um, so we might see something yet, but uh, three for one is not bad. Uh, they will all be ended up being knitted into the same tree as they come up uh, to create a sort of living archway. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how they're looking. Next up we have this lovely little lychee seedling. Uh, which is one of 14, I think, that have gone in so far that I grew from seed at the beginning of the rains. And they're coming up really nicely. Um, this has got nice firm texture. It hasn't got any new growth, I don't think, since the last time we checked up on it. But what was new has hardened up beautifully. Again, good colour, good texture, and I'm happy with that. It's sibling, which looks a little bit more exposed at this time of day, but will be getting a lot less of the harsh afternoon sunlight. It's also looking nice. There's actually a nice little green growing point coming up there in the center of the sort of right hand side fork, which is good to see. So those went in with this lovely little jackfruit seedling here, and you can see this leaf is finally opening. It's been sort of poking up, suggesting it's going to for a while. You see jackfruits come up with these two little leaf sheaths, which will slowly fall away, and then the central leaf that is slowly unfurling in the middle will open up and be adding to the sort of energy collection before winter really sets in. 
Over here we have the first of our Ilea guineensis, which is the African oil palm. Uh, so it is nice and firm on the central leaf, which is actually starting to think about opening up, which is good. Um, and yeah, I'm generally pleased with that. And a slightly more sheltered sibling is looking nice and firm. Again, the growth point is coming up well, and I'm pretty happy with how that's looking overall. What will one day be the subcanopy to all of these trees, are these little Pachira glabra, which is the uh, sabinat, which is often sold as a houseplant with three plaited together with lovely green stems. And this is looking nice and firm. It had been looking a little wilted yesterday, but I gave it a bit of water. It's perking right up, so that's really good to see. And despite going in a little late in the season for planting these, its sibling has nice tender growth coming here without any sign of sunburn. So I'm really pleased with how that's coming along. And the third sibling has had a little bit of damage here. Most of this is actually insect damage rather than, rather than sun damage. There's some secondary sunburn where something's chewed away at the leaves here. But overall, the plant is not unhealthy. There's some nice growth coming in the center there. And so that should be opening up quite soon. Next up we have Rolf, our little Rolfia, or wild quinine. Uh, qu wild quinine can be used for many of the same uh, afflictions as quinine, but it should be used with extreme caution because it's very toxic and not particularly closely related to quinine, so it's not going to behave in exactly the same way uh, pharmacologically. Uh, so don't try this at home is what I'm saying. And we have Persia americana, which is a little avocado that went in just the other day. Um, and it's looking a little brown on its growing tip, but still tender there, so I don't think that's actually sunburn, just probably a little bit of the fuzz to protect it from burning and the cooling too much. Um, but generally speaking, I'm happy with how this one is coming along. The leaf is nice and firm, it's kept a good color. So that should be putting some growth in as soon as the roots are settled in. And one tree that should eventually shade them all, because if it doesn't manage to, it probably won't be able to get pollinated either. So this is Caria elnoinensis, this is a pecan nut, and it's one of the very few trees that I planted that will be wind pollinated. Um, they are more temperate than we are, but I have seen some plantations of three-year-old trees looking pretty healthy further south, and based on the chilling requirements, we should get cold enough. Now, that, that growing tip is very inactive at the moment. I've been hoping it'd be putting in some growth soon, but it might be uh, waiting for it to cool down a bit, so it's a little bit more within its normal temperature range, I'm not sure. So our fourth little type of nut tree is a cashew, and this little one I initially didn't count, uh, because these notoriously transport very very poorly and I transplanted five and waited to see how they would do before counting them and all that green you can see there is actually new growth since it went in the original leaves have now died and shriveled at the base um, and everything there is new and that's looking really good I would say as is cashew number two and cashew number three and cashew number four even cashew number five here which did get quite a lot of damage when, when something decided to curl some of its leaves together to make its nest. This is coming up beautifully, so I think we should be looking at a nice little cashew grove in here quite soon. In with them to make sure I did have a tree for the day, I did plant this little Sagus romanzofiana, which ironically, despite being notoriously good for transplanting, is probably the least happy of what I transplanted, but I am happy with how it's coming up. The central leaf is still nice and firm. It's not moving fast, but it is moving upwards slowly. Um, and it's still getting some work done by this fallen leaf that got blown over shortly after transplanting. So hopefully we should be getting some growth visible soon, and in the meantime it's alive, so that's all they really need. Okay, and we have another pecan. Now this one, even though it's more exposed, its growth tip does seem a little bit more sheltered by this Dracaena here, and that does look like it's actually gonna be doing some growth soon, we'll see. So far it's also done all of nothing. Uh, but again, this is the time of year when, when a lot of the older plantations in a cooler part of the country are putting their growth in. So hopefully as we cool down and get to that temperature, that will also start happening here. But we'll see. Right, so this might look pretty dire, uh, but this is actually what exactly what this tree should be doing this time of year. This is Adansonian digitata, which is the mainland bearbab, which is the most westerly species of bearbab tree. Um, and it is actually supposed to drop all its leaves at this time of year, because I don't think it's actually from that, but the, the bearbab does spend most of its year completely bare, even when quite young, um, and all of our established ones are also dropping their leaves now, so this is not a cause for concern, so I'm quite happy. On to another Sagris romanzofiana, so we actually have quite a few of these Brazilian queen palms. These, this is not the last one by any stretch, uh, and it is coming up nicely. It is nice and green. It doesn't seem to have put in too much growth since it went in, 
It was a good colour, it's not showing any sunburn and it's not showing any water stress, so I'm happy with that. And it's sibling who went in on the same day, it's appreciating this little bit of shelter. This, these are still juvenile leaves, so as it gets a little bit bigger these should start splitting and looking more like a typical Brazilian queen palm. Um, but for now it's still in its juvenile stage and it's slowly coming up with that central leaf, but it's in no hurry to go anywhere I would say. Deep in the shadows here we have another little Articarpus heterophyllus, or jackfruit, uh, which you can see the sheath around that new leaf is splitting open, the little pale leaf is just starting to peek out. Those are very prone to sunburn, uh, so hopefully this very dense uh, sort of companion planting I've given it should allow it to start pushing up and growing until it's large enough to not be so tender. And although they are less prone to sunburn, this has been in a little bit too much sun for its own liking, so this is a light sheet, and you can see just here little black tip, and that hasn't actually killed the growing point, it's only the very tip of it, which again tends to be a sort of sheath type growth, uh, but that has definitely burned off quite badly. The leaves themselves, the mature ones, are a decent colour, so hopefully as it sort of recovers from that it should be able to start putting out more growth uh, with a little bit more sun protection sort of internally, uh, but it's not looking too thrilled right now. So another little light chichinense is looking in a fairly similar state, so the adult leaves are nice and firm, but the growing tips that did not manage to open up before the rain stopped are a little bit burnt there along the tips. They do seem fine at the bases, so there should be some more growth coming here soon enough, but whether that'll wait until after winter we will have to see. And then we have our third species of Bauhinia, probably the most abundant one you're going to see today. So this is Bauhinia variegata, which is a Singapore orchid tree, or just orchid tree, because it is usually the most common one in cultivation. Um, and it is usually much more exposed than this in the afternoon. This is this is very much its morning position, where it's well sheltered from the sun, uh, but is very, 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 very happy, not showing any sunburn from the hot afternoon sun that it gets most days. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Next up we have our little banana tree, and if you want to point out that the banana is not a tree but a perennial herb, we do have a backup, which can be counted as a tree for that day, it just isn't the one going on the list, this is Dracaena stunary, which is looking in decent health, it's got a little bit of water burn from where it was resting and it got uh, quite puddled, but the banana itself has nice open leaves at this time of day, as the day heats up those will close up to conserve water, and that's actually quite a good thing to be seeing, because even though that means it's not photosynthesizing for that time of day, before the growth actually sets in, it's one way to see that this is alive and responding to its environment that way. So, so I'm happy with how this is doing at the moment. Slightly confusingly, perhaps I'm also quite happy with how this is doing. So this is Phoenix Reclinata, and this is one of three that got pretty badly sunburned. And one actually got taken off the list on the last review that went up. Um, so this little green growth here has all come up since that sunburn. And there's a secondary leaf which never really got sunburned here, which is basically, this is one of the clumping palms, so occasionally they will start sending up multiple shoots, even when they're quite small. Uh, but it's really good to see this is nice and firm, and it is coming up quite well. So that should recover in a few months' time pretty well and look like a palm tree again. This one actually got taken off the list last time because I could not see any green at all, and I thought we were looking at a completely dead little palm. Um, but, if you look in here... There's a nice firm green colouring here, and that central leaf is nice and firm down there. Up here it's just dead, uh, but down there it is alive and it is moving, and so we are going to be adding this one back to the list. because I'm happy with that, and that is really nicely firmly in, so that seems like the roots are re-establishing pretty well. And so yeah, so uh, I suppose appropriately for the day we have a little resurrection palm right there. Although it also looks pretty dire, this was always the least uh, least bad of those three sunburned palms. So there's another Phoenix Reclinata. You can see central leaf and one of the older leaves both have some nice green colouring on them that didn't get so exposed to the sun, so it didn't burn when we had that sudden drying out period. And those have been moving up. Now inside here, in the only time of day where it remotely gets uh, sunlight directly, is another little Articarpus heterophyllus or jackfruit, which is coming pretty nicely. One thing about the Articarpus that I grow from seed is our mother tree and all the seedlings I've ever grown from her are not heterophyllous. So usually jackfruit have very variable leaves, so they'll have some sort of round, slightly pointed leaves like this, some completely round, some with deeply lobed margins, um, and some quite slender leaves. And I've actually got the seedling I bought when it does that, but all of the seedlings I've grown from seed and the mother plant they come from are completely homophilous, which, which does perplex me a little bit. Uh, because there's nothing else that the fruit could be 
uh, within the Genus Articarp, and it's definitely an Articarp, but anyway, I'm happy with how this one is looking. It actually went in with a Pandanus tectorius. Now this could end up becoming a tree itself, this is one of the screw palms, uh, but I suspect this is a dwarfing variety, which will stay sort of ground hugging, but it should be a nice sort of ground cover uh, for this very moisture dependent, shade dependent fruit tree. In what is something of a repeating pattern, the jackfruit went in on the same day as this lovely little lychee tree, but I'm really pleased with how that's coming. A second lychee from the same day did actually get a little sunburn despite being in quite a sheltered location, but you can see some more little tender leaves just starting to poke up, so keep that water keep it from getting too exposed. It should have settled into the new light regime by now, so hopefully it won't be too prone to sunburn again uh, without anything major changing, uh, but it's really nice to see it coming up again. The third little light of the planting also seems to have some growth coming. I do think it had some leaves coming up previously which seem to have fallen off, uh, but it's looking in a pretty good state and it's grown much more than the others because it's, it had just gone through producing some new growth when the weather changed. Uh, which meant that it had a head start and didn't lose those leaves to burning, which has really helped it sort of take off a little bit faster. Here we have a lovely little Bauhinia variegata, and if ever there was a tender tree that is not bothered by sunlight, it seems to be this one, because these are incredibly soft, tanned new leaves, and they're not showing the slightest bit of sun damage. There's a little bit of insect damage here. Looks like a caterpillar had a little go when they were very tender, uh, but nothing from the sun at all, and just looking absolutely lovely. And this is a uh, loquat, Aerobotria japonica, which usually benefits from a little bit more shelter than it's got here, but it's coming up nicely. This leaf is unfurling a little bit distorted because of where the calenco is, uh, but that's giving it a nice bit of shade, protecting it from sunburn. So hopefully that'll allow it to settle in and push up through the calenco uh, as it develops. So I'm pretty happy with how that is at the moment. It did get some dew burn, uh, basically, so where dew settled and then the sun came out, it burned. Uh, but that's quite old now and it seems not to have suffered any more than it originally got, so I'm happy with that. Down here we have a little Suriname cherry, which is Eugenia uniflora. These, I did actually sun harden them a little bit before I planted out. They, they aren't great in full sun, but this does get shelter from the midday sun by a uh, sort of guava volunteer that I've let stay here. Um, and it's looking nice and green. It's not looking sunburned at all, which is good because it's had a whole day out here without any real cloud cover and it's looking a nice healthy color. So I'm happy with that. And it's sibling, which enjoys the shelter of a few uh, little yellow ipe, which is the Handoranthus uh, chrysanthus, I think, uh, one of the South American timber trees, uh, is actually also looking really nice, nice and bright and green without any sign of sunburn. So that's pretty good at this stage. And I just wanted to show you one of the Daites aeridoides, which is the walking iris that I planted the companion plant here is coming into flower, which is just lovely. That is going along with this little uh, Dracaena studenary, which is one of the times this has been planted as a plant in its own right, rather than as a companion plant, uh, which is looking a really nice colour. This was pre-rooted before it went in, which means it didn't really suffer in the way a lot of the other ones you'll see have. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good and I'm really happy with that. And then we've got, yeah, the Aloe Cameroni coming into flower and the Daites iridoides coming into flower. So pollinators will be pretty happy with that too. And here we have the second Liverstona of the day, although it was the, <laughs> the one that went in just as a Liverstona rather than being mistaken for a saddle because I'm foolish. Uh, and this one is looking nice, looking healthy. The central leaf seems to be coming up and there is a new little growth point poking up in the center. And this little grasshopper here on it is Pericatentops solitaris. He won't do it any damage. He's not really interested in palms. He's more for the herbs. So yeah, but I'm happy with how we are looking here. Another Dracaena studenary that went in as a tree in its own right. And you can see the center is nice and green and coming up quite well. The older leaves did suffer a little bit of water burn again, uh, but that doesn't seem to be holding it back. It's now nice and upright. These will slowly shed off and then it will look much healthier pretty soon. Yeah, it's coming up well, I'd say. And one tree to rule them all and then the darkness shade them. This is the Kapok tree that all of these trees will hopefully eventually be part of the sub canopy of, which would really reduce their water requirements. But in the meantime, this tree is from a more tropical part of Africa and also from South America. Um, and it is not showing the growth I would like. They do settle in pretty well in Zambia and even some of the places more frost prone than Lusaka. Um, and so it shouldn't be wiped out by the winter, but I would like to see a little bit more growth before it drops all its leaves. Uh, but maybe we just have to wait till next season for that. And just next to that, uh, which will eventually form a nice fire break around it in case any fires do get this far in, we, you can see this little Barbary fig is recovering really well. It's neither from the Barbary Mountains nor a fig, it's a cactus from Central America. Uh, so, 
but just lying them on the ground they root really well uh, provided you basically scrape back any vegetation on the ground they, they take a little bit faster that way they can take even if you just drop them on top of the grass because a nice heavy piece like this will squash the grass down to ground level and then can root through it but it's coming up really nicely and i'm really pleased you have another little dracaena studenary here and you can see this is actually nice and firm now uh, whereas when it first went in it did get quite floppy uh, it'll probably stay at this angle it is it was slight it was slightly crooked uh, when i first planted it so it's, it was always going to be at an angle uh, but a little bit of that was accentuated by the flop that it got when it first went in. It does have some nice tender little green leaves coming up right in the center there once you get past some of the burnt leaves. Uh, so sunburn and water burn, mostly water burn from being in a puddle. Uh, but it is coming up quite well, I would say. This is less good. So this is what often happens with Dracaenas when they're first establishing. So mole rats usually won't chew on the base of a healthy plant, but when one is stressed, it's fair game. So they have eaten away the skin around the base here, so I will basically have to cut this up somewhere around here and reroot it and then replant it. I will take this off the list because I'll root it in a pot before replanting it. Uh, so we've gone down by one just in that. That is a shame. Uh, but it's not dead by any means. This will, this will be fairly easy to recover. It's just frustrating that that has happened just after I replanted its little jade bush, which had a similar issue which I realized couldn't be the, the mole rat because it was entirely above ground where the damage occurred. But anyway, uh, not unsalvageable, but coming off the list until it's replanted. Okay, so here we have a little uh, parrot's beak mango, which is one of the pickling mangoes. I'm not sure if there is a better name for the cultivars because uh, I'm really not good at knowing the cultivars, but it's coming up pretty nicely. You've got those lovely little red leaves in the center. This was actually growing epiphytically. The seed had caught in the crook of the parent tree, um, and so, I wasn't sure how well it would adapt uh, to more light and directly in the soil, but it seems to have settled in pretty well, and so I'm happy with that. And in here we have a Madagascar almond, uh, which is... And here we have the Madagascar umbrella tree, which is one of two types of completely unrelated umbrella tree you will see today. It's actually Terminalia mantelli, which is sometimes also called the Madagascar almond, but I think that's more because the tree looks similar to Terminalia catapa, which is a an Indian and Madagascar tree, I think, which does produce a seed that can be used like an almond. I don't believe the seed of this is edible, uh, but it's looking nice. A lot of this growth is tender new growth that has come up since it went in, um, and it should sp start heading up quite soon. You can actually see in the center there, there's a nice little red growing point. So that will head up a few feet and then should branch out. It's another little flat layer of branches. Another Madagascan tree which is inclined to have a flat top, although usually in a very different way. This is Delanix regia, which is the uh, flamboyant tree. It's one of several species of flamboyant. It's the only one that's common in cultivation, though, with a bright, bright red flower. Beautiful flowers. Uh, tends to have a very spreading crown, can acidify the soil, so it's useful to have other trees around it. And you can see a lovely little tender growth point in there with no real damage on it, coming up beautifully, so I'm very happy with that. And the flamboyant is also called the flame tree. Uh, but so this one is sometimes called the Nandi flame to differentiate it. This is Spathodia campanulata, which is an East and Central African tree. It's basically everywhere further north than Zambia, outside of rainforest and outside of true desert, this grows. Uh, so it is a beautiful, beautiful tree where it's in flower, sometimes called, called the tulip tree. And it is what in Africa is more often called the flame tree. Uh, but it's got some lovely tender new growth coming here. This was a volunteer that was transplanted and died right back after I potted it up, and so this growth was just appearing when I decided it was time to plant it out. Um, and I'm happy to say that it looks quite happy with that decision. And down here we have our little candelabra tree, Euphorbia ingens, which is one of the cactus-like euphorbias, so milkweeds, uh, which has flowers forming here. Which, as I mentioned in the planting, are not great for honey. You can also see, just in the centre there, a little red red tip, which will be turning into new leaves and new growth soon. So that's really good to see that forming. Around that, we've got one, two, and three yuccas, showing varying degrees of settling. The first one is definitely looking the best settled. It's nice and firm, and the growth point is pointing straight upwards and actually seems to be opening some new leaves since it went in. So I'm really pleased with that. This one over here, is a little more crooked. These did come from a large tree, which did mean that a lot of the branches I could cut off were in some level of shade, so they were distorting towards the light. Um, and so there was a certain amount of distortion on this when it went in, but a lot of this is just from it drying out. And so while, as it rehydrates, as its roots develop, this should straighten up. There might be a kink in the branch long term. 
here, but this should end up pointing directly upwards. And the third is in, generally speaking, a much better state. So this is one of the flies that you should never find annoying. So this is a tachinid fly, which are a group of parasitoids. They, they lay their eggs in caterpillars, and mostly sometimes in beetles, depending on species. This is Blepharella. I'm not actually sure what this host is, uh, but it is, yeah, it's a, one of the parasitoids. And they have these wonderful bristly back ends, which tend to mark them out from everything except the flesh flies, which are interested in your barbecues. So next up, we have probably the most clear case of an ophthalus tree we've had so far. Uh, there was, at some point, a Brachycetia taxifolia here, and it just vanished entirely. Um, and it doesn't seem to be reappearing anytime soon. Fortunately, its sibling is actually looking pretty reasonable. There's a little bit of sunburn here, but there's also, right in the center there, a tiny little growth point starting to form. So hopefully we'll be seeing a little flush of red leaves in the next few weeks. And deep within here, there is another one which has suffered a little bit more sunburn. I think this is more because it's got a lot more grass around it, it gets more dew on it, and then that burns in the sun. So it's lost a lot of leaves. Again, there is a nice growth point forming. Whether that will do anything before winter, or it'll wait until we warm up again in sort of September time, I'm not sure, but we will have to keep an eye on it and see. And over here, we have another one who is coming off the list today. So this was a rose apple. And I'm not convinced it's completely dead, but it does seem to be relatively detached from life. All these leaves are coming off. There's no texture left in them at all. Um, and before I watered it yesterday, it didn't seem remotely firmly in the ground. It does seem a little better now, which is why I'm hopeful eventually something will come back here. So I will keep checking on it, keep watering it. But I think this is probably a lesson too. When a rose apple pops up by itself, just accept its lo chosen location um, and don't try and move it to somewhere you think is going to be better for it because this one clearly has not appreciated that. If it changes its mind, I will recant that statement entirely. Um, but yeah, this did not look like it was a good decision on my part. On the same day I made that poor decision, I made what I stand by as a decision of planting out this little seedling macadamia, who seems to be settling in pretty well. It's already had one little fresh flush of growth since then, and it seems like there's another growth point forming in the middle. And it's looking in good health, it's got a good colour, good texture, so I'm happy with that. Right, so here we have a rather tragic looking Kegelia africana, so this is the sausage tree. It did have some lovely new growth, but caterpillars have put paid to that. They even put paid to the growth tip, which was here. But the stem is nice and firm, and there's actually a little bit of green growth coming out the side here. So hopefully we should get some more growth coming in soon. Although I have noticed the mature tree is starting to drop its leaves now, so it might go dormant for the winter before that happens. And now in here, we have a lychee in what at this time of day looks like far too much sun. This will be in a little bit more shelter as the day goes on, but it is still in a relatively exposed spot, so it's really nice to see that this tender growth is not showing any significant sunburn. There's a little bit of damage there, but I think that's around some insect damage, and so the tree itself should perk up pretty well. Sorry, the color in the full light is a little overexposed, but it's a decent green, and this tender growth is white still. It should be turning green from red at this point. Uh, so we will see how that pans out, but looking pretty good generally. So I keep threatening to cut this leaf off the aloe that shades this little lychee, but it seems to be really serving it well because there's another growth tip coming along. So I think I will just accept that I'm leaving, leaving this leaf in here, especially as the sunlight is getting more intense at this time of year. I believe there's extra solar activity this year, which might be why some things that don't usually burn are burning. Um, but I think this spot is serving this little lychee tree pretty well. I'm happy with that. Now those went in with this little Indian gooseberry or emlick or amla, uh, which is Philanthus emblica, which I keep expecting to do some growing, which is silly because the previous amla I planted elsewhere did absolutely nothing for its first year and I thought it was dead. Um, and it was only when that shot out and doubled in size with some new growth when the rains came back uh, that I decided I would risk planting another one. And Generally speaking, the plant itself is looking pretty happy. The other one dropped all its leaves much bit faster than this, but I think that has to do with time of year that it was planted. Um, and this currently hasn't dropped any of its main leaves, but it's looking nice, it's looking good and green. It will probably start to drop these as the weather changes, but for now, I'm happy with how it's looking. We have another little phoenix who's been in a more sheltered spot, but as the sun is moving, it's starting to get a little bit more sun. It does seem to be suffering a little from that. It's a little looser than it was, which is probably just a little bit of water stress. 
Um, I do think I should be building up the soil around this a bit because it's, it seems to have sort of eroded a bit. I think probably I, I didn't put as much back in as I should have done and it's collapsed a little. But generally speaking, it's a good colour. The central stem is nice and firm. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and certainly it doesn't look as bad as a couple of the other things we've taken off our list today. And this little Sagris has the advantage of a little bit more shelter and it's definitely taking advantage of that. These lower leaves are a lovely texture. The upper leaf is still a little floppier than I'd like. Um, and I would like to start seeing a new leaf poking up soon, which currently we do not have, but generally speaking it's in decent health for a transplant uh, with the amount of care that I'm giving it, and so I'm happy with that. And also, in decent state, it, it's getting a little less flop than it was to begin with, because this had been in the pathway of what I suspect were the pouch rats, and so it had been trampled around a bit, uh, but it is coming up alright. And the central leaf is reasonable and firm at the base, even if it's still very soft towards the tip. But I'm happy with that, generally. Right, so for our next tree, we're going to this wonderful little cathedral, which I think is appropriate for today. This is the Bambus of Vulgaris Cathedral, in which I have planted an Australian umbrella tree, which is a Heptapleurum actinophyllum. And all this growth up here is new since it went in. It is a little smaller than its leaves from before it went in, uh, but it's still filling out, so I'm not too concerned about that. They do grow in very dense rainforests, naturally. They often grow as epiphytes, actually, in their natural habitat. Um, so it shouldn't have any trouble with this. And its upward growth since it went in has been really good. I'm really pleased with that. It doesn't look etiolated. Uh, the stems are a little longer than they were in its original location, but not in an unhealthy way. And the stem hasn't gotten too thin, which is what I'd be really worried about there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, so I want to call this a little tree. It's not that little. Uh, this is the quince, which I want to call Malus oblonga, but it's not been Malus for quite a long time. Uh, I will put the proper name up on screen. Uh, but you can see its stress here in the form of what often happens with a freshly planted fruit tree, which is ants farming aphids. Now this is fadol, which are quite aggressive in their farming sometimes, but they're usually not in a way that is particularly damaging to the tree. There is another one that I'd be much more worried about, which is Chromatogasca, the cocktail ant. Uh, when it's just fadol, it's not too concerning. They're just taking advantage of a little bit of stress, but once the tree perks up a bit, they will go away. So I'm not really worried there. Um, hopefully, that won't be long before it perks up, and hopefully in the interim period, we will get some woolly-legs butterflies coming along, uh, whose caterpillars eat the aphids very voraciously and quite quickly dissuade the ants. But we'll see. Now in here, we have Prunus persica, which is the peach. Now, ironically, the quince is from Persia, and the, the peach is not. The peach is originally domesticated in China, uh, and it's looking a nice colour considering how short of leaves it was when it went in. Uh, it does actually have some little growing points forming in the middle there, so I'm happy with that. We should be seeing some growth over winter if we're lucky. So another fruit tree originally from China, uh, we have another Lychee chinensis, which, you know, much better named. And um, this one is looking exposed right now. Really, it's not very exposed at all. This is probably the only hour of the day when it's going to get direct sunlight at all. That did lead to a little bit of sunburn just after transplanting. Uh, but hopefully it shouldn't be too serious and there is actually some nice tender growth coming up there in the middle so I'm happy with that. Do I have permission to continue? Right, so here we have one of the disadvantages of altitude showing itself in full Technicolor glory. Uh, so this is Colophus bermamopani, which is a tree that really likes full sun, usually. Unfortunately, we are at the very high end of its altitudinal range. Um, arguably, we're above the top of its altitudinal range, and so what had been coming as beautiful new growth is now toast. There is another little tender growth point coming there, so hopefully, having sort of had a little bit of sunburn for the second time. Uh, this tree has now adapted to the light level here, um, and we shouldn't be seeing more sunburn, hopefully, but uh, this little guy, Hamilton, I've been calling him, uh, is really not in a situation to be able to lose much more to some sunburn, uh, so hopefully that is the last of it. And Hamilton's sister, uh, Aitken here, is looking much, much better, which is just showing the value of a little bit more shelter in there. I'm much happier with how she is going. Um, and yet yeah, all of this is new and there is actually some more growth forming in there too, so that's fantastic. So over here we have probably one of the few trees that I think should be a decent companion to the Mapani. The Mapanis can suffer 
quite a lot if they get overshaded. So it's good to have small trees with open canopies around them. So this one suit fits that bill very well. This is a carrot tree, or will be one day. This is Stegenatinia araliaceae, and it's actually got, to replace some of the leaves that got burnt right off after planting, it's got a little tiny green leaf coming up right here in the center, just hidden by the calico. The aloe that I put in with it has suffered a little bit of water stress, but seems to be perking up again. And fortunately, the rubble around the base of it seems to have prevented more rat damage, which is something that's going to be a recurring theme today, I'm afraid. Deep in the shelter, we have our most recently planted like chichinensis. And despite going in rather late for a tropical tree, it seems to be producing some lovely new leaves there, so I'm really happy with that. This is in the shade of quite a few different trees, and it's quite well sheltered from the wind too. Uh, so that should really work for it. Uh, in this situation because these can be very very sulky in full sun. They don't fruit quite as vigorously in the shade but when the choices either have to water it more than you want to keep it alive or get slightly less fruit, um, I will go with watering slightly less for some fruit rather than forgetting to water it, it dying and getting no fruit. Right so this is Moonon longifolia which is sometimes called the false ashok or just ashok which does lead to confusion with Siraca indica which is what this is usually sold as in Zambia. Um, Unlike that one, it does not produce an edible fruit, as far as I know. This is in the custard apple family, so it's quite a good companion plant just for its toxicity. It's also a really good one for sort of landscape planting, because it doesn't take up much space, its roots aren't particularly invasive, and it gets along with most other trees pretty well as a windbreak, as a sand barrier, and as a general sort of companion plant. So I'm really happy with how this has been coming up. And its sibling over here is also coming up nicely. This is currently getting a little bit more shelter from its companion plant, but both these are pretty exposed. So I'm really pleased with how well they've taken considering that. So we have one of our little rough lemons here who has suffered quite a lot from the citrus swallowtail and that has led to what it usually leads to, which is a little flush of growth. This isn't the healthiest looking growth. This is quite compacted soil, but I suspect there's probably some aphids somewhere are responsible for this distortion. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other growing points that look like they will be opening up soon. Uh, so I'm not too concerned yet. I did see quite a large caterpillar here. And there's some lovely healthy growth in the slightly more sheltered spot. So it might be more about the sun than anything else. And the sunlight has been very intense this last week. So that could be, could be what's causing the distress. Right, so this is an African olive, which was understandably sold as Olea africana, which would literally translate to African olive, uh, but that species doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so that's probably uh, Olea europea subspecies cuspidata, which is the same form that used to be called Olea africana, but its leaves are quite different to some of the other Olea europea su subspecies cuspidata that I've seen. Um, and so I'm wondering if it's one of the other African species of Olea instead. But we will see. Uh, one way or another, it'll be a nice tree to have. Uh, some of them get truly massive, which might me make me regret its location, but we'll work around that if that is the case. Right, and now in the shadows here, we have our first little uh, format of Phyllum bipinatophidium, which is the tree philodendron. So this one is showing some growth. So right in the center there, you can see some tender little leaves just starting to poke up. Um, but nothing particularly dramatic. You can see some of the leaves have taken, although they are still very much juvenile size, have taken more of that strongly lobe mature form, uh, which means it's probably in more light than it actually started, which is quite interesting because those have put it in a pretty shady spot. But I'm happy with how it's looking generally. On to our tree tomato. So this is Solanum batasium, uh, which is actually lovely and soft at this point. These are new leaves since it went in here. And there is another one coming here beautiful and soft. They were looking a little wilted, but I gave it a little bit of water and it's perked right up. I think it just needs a little bit more regular water than a lot of the other trees because these are again very tender leaves. But I'm very pleased with how it's looking. And here we have Australian tea tree, which is Melaleuca alternifolia, uh, which had been worrying me for a while because it went very, very pale in its new growth. But it has darkened up beautifully. It's still tender, but it's a much better color. You can still see some tender growing tips that are still pale. Uh, which hopefully means there'll be a little bit more growth before it sort of slows down for winter because I believe this probably will stop growing over winter. Um, but I'm quite happy with how that's looking so far. And then our final tree for part one, this is a Moringa olifera, which had been doing really, really well. It does seem to have sort of had a little bit of dieback. As the sun's moved north, it's getting a little bit less light. Um, and that means its shelter here is probably getting a little too intense. But its younger growth is actually pretty healthy, and these are quite deciduous, so they would usually drop all their leaves over winter anyway. It's just I wasn't expecting it quite this soon, but I'm pretty happy with that generally. 
Right, so that's everything for part one. I'm splitting these into two parts now with about half the plants in each. Um, this week has not been great. Uh, so we've actually taken two things off the list, which is the most we've done yet, I believe. Um, we have added one back on, and one of the ones that's come off I know I can restore, uh, but not in the same spot necessarily. Uh, and the other one, I, I obviously hope it will come back, but I think the chances of that happening are pretty low at this point. Um, otherwise, everything's looking pretty healthy, especially considering how dry it's been and how intense the sun has been. But I would really like um, a little bit more vigor in this last little warm bit before it gets cold for winter and most things slow down and stop. But it is how it is. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please tune in again for part two if you enjoyed this, and don't if you didn't.